How did the Eccleston George group begin? Uh, well, it started with me. Um, I'm Nigel George, so uh, I'm the George part of the Eccleston George, obviously. Uh, on my own, working in zoology at the time, trying to find ways to enhance the lives of captive animals, um, and discovered by process of, of uh, elimination a material that would allow me to do that, to, to make sculptures essentially for, for animals. They're naturalistic stuff, trees and rocks and boulders and that kind of thing. Um, it's a very simple medium uh, based around uh, recycled newspaper basically. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's that medium that's, that's carried us forward and then uh, you know, from being on my own to being in a, in a group of artists working together. Yeah. How did you come to uh, arrive on the island? It was about 15 years ago. Uh, things weren't going too well for me business-wise on the, on the mainland. Uh, and it was on arriving on the island, I kind of thought that being creative here, that would be the end to that. I, I couldn't have been more wrong because it's really moving to the island is what got me and then the Eccleston George group going. The first thing I did was recognise that there was a, a gap in the market for a themer, which essentially is what, what I was uh, you know, working in zoology doing, theming. Um, and I just got very lucky with, um, with Amazon World. Um, the owner took us on to redesign the front of his attraction and probably 10 years, that was 10 years ago, so 10 years on, it's, it may well be still the single biggest project that we've ever done. It was huge, and there was only two of us, just me and Chris Eccleston at that time. Um, and, and that was our kind of launch pad. The, the, the public artwork, the engagement projects that we do with the community, uh, the school projects, outdoor learning projects, has, has all happened by accident. But just through sort of stumbling into somebody or having a conversation, um, and particularly, I suppose, what really got us kicked off in education was the work at St George's School, which is a special needs school on the island. And that, over the last five years, has probably become the most important strand to our work, I would say. Working with us, we've managed to create a brand new kind of education facility which is being used by St George's School but uh, beyond that is being used by the, the wider education community. Other schools, so good is this thing that they've built in their own school grounds, it's that other schools are now paying to use it and um, it, as far as we know it's the only project of its kind anywhere in the country and we're, so we're particularly proud of it and it, uh, you know, it's something that needs funding all the time, we have to find funding initiatives for, just so that we can go and be there to spend the time to build a new zone or whatever it is we're doing um, and so there's, it's a lot of hard work you know, but it's a proper business and it's, it, you know, it's, you know, we're members of the board as are several students and we have meetings every month and decisions are made between us and you know Everything that goes into running a business, for, you know, goes into Dragon. And these kids are doing this, you know, almost from when they turn up at St George's School through to when they leave at the age of 19. Now, you, you know, you talk about the, the creative skills you use for um, theming and so on, but you now work in, in a vast array of uh, creative arts, don't you? Yeah. Um, the sculptural skills are still high on, on our agenda and certainly the thing that clients come to us you know, uh, and ask for over and over again because they're so transferable, you know. We can use those skills in all sorts of different places. But as the Eccleston George team has got bigger and there's now six of us, each of the people that has joined the team has come with a skill of their own and some of those have nothing to do with sculpture at all. So they, they, are, they work as sculptors but they also are talented musicians, you know, and, and, it's, and that's kind of opened us up to do other kinds of projects. This is, this is our latest project which we've been working on for the whole of this week. Um, and it's called East Meets West and the idea of this project was to address this sort of social divide between East Cows and West Cows which we, we wondered whether it was, just, it was just made up but actually it turns out that there's a lot of weight to it and um, so we've been working with students from the middle school in East Cows and the high school on, in West Cows and bringing them together to come up with designs for two pieces of public art, one on the east side and one on the west side. 
the students have just been absolutely amazing, you know. And it's lovely to work with the, the A-level end, because often we're working with smaller children. And so they're very capable, they understood the premise, they understood about the, the, the format, the, the bass relief format. Um, and, and they've been through the whole process of, you know, it, uh, the exact same one that if we were being commissioned by a, a client, they've gone through that same process. So from the, the concept, coming up with the ideas, through to making the, the designs, and then installing them, uh, you know, in the public realm. And that's pretty empowering at the age of 17 to have your own piece of public art, you know, the corporate team building type thing. You know, this would be perfect because it's all about, you have to work as a team. These students that have been working with us have had to learn to work together as a group, not just within their own group, but within ours as well. Essentially what happens is when we do this, whoever works with us comes onto the Eccleston George team for the time that they're with us. Generally speaking, there's, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of of creativity in uh, in the sort of that, that office in, environment, and, and obviously what we've you know we've done a little bit of research and seen that that there is uh, a window of opportunity to get into the corporate team building. We kind of envisage the idea that we could be mobile as we are and go to the office setting or at least the outdoor space around the office and and work with teams of uh, of uh, their own workers to. Uh, design and create somewhere that they could sit outside, I don't know, something sculptural, you know, for their own grounds and get that real feeling of, uh, of working through a process as a team. But the, the ownership of it at the end, that's the all important thing, you know, as well. They, you know, something that they have made together with their hands. And I think you take those skills with you, you know, once you realise uh, what you can do collectively. This is how Eccleston George works, you know, we're we're a proper collective and our strength is in our numbers, you know, um, and I'm absolutely certain that that is something that can be learned, for, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, people get stuck in their ways of doing things and, and not least us too, you know, if we go and work in an office environment we will learn something as well, it's never one-sided, wherever we go we come out that little bit stronger than we were before we went in there. Do you think creativity has a connection with sort of entrepreneurial ability? Oh, absolutely, I do, yeah. There's no doubt that the, uh, you know, from what I've seen, most entrepreneurs are creatives at heart. And it's interesting that they often don't think of themselves as being creatives um, because they, they get caught up in, in this thing that a creative person is, is an artist who paints pictures. Now, you know, I know that that's not true. Um, we have painters in the group, but they're no more creative than the ones who can't draw for toffees. It's a, it's a, a creativity is a way of thinking. That's what it is. And, and, and it's often to do with um, a confidence in your ability to, um, to let go and not to, not to um, worry too much about what the end result might be and accept that it may be different from that idea that you started with. And, you know, that's something that we now as a group really embrace because if we didn't, if we were rigid about our ideas, we wouldn't be doing any of the things that we're doing now. Um, and it, what's interesting is that children have that in spades. They're, it's just there and it gets knocked out of them <laughs> through the education process, um, learning by rote and all that kind of stuff. You know, by the time they, they come out the other end, they've lost a lot of that innate ability to think creatively and solve problems creatively. And the Isle of Wight is just such a fantastic place for it. It's, it is a melting pot of creativity. And, and Eccleston George, when I said there's six of us, there might as well be 600 of us because I know most of the people on, on the island who are creatives. And at any moment, if a project comes in and it demands a skill that we don't have amongst us, I've just got to get on the phone and say to somebody, you know, can you, will, you, will you get involved in there straight in and we can go in, a, in another direction. It is a fantastic place, it really is, for, for finding people with creative talents. They're often unsung, they're hidden away doing their thing, you know.